predicting ionic charges. To predict the ionic charge of an element, you need to use the periodic table. We're going to use lithium as an example. Lithium is in group one of the periodic table. It has an atomic number of three. That means it has got three protons and three electrons. It's an atom. And atoms always have an equal number of protons and electrons. Now, when lithium forms an ion, it loses the outermost electron. When it loses its outermost electron, it becomes more stable. And it forms what we call an ion. Now, an ion has an overall charge. The reason why it now has an overall charge is because it has two electrons, not three. And when we add these two charges together, the overall charge on the particle is plus one. Now, when you're trying to predict the uh, charge of an atom, you don't have to do a sum such as this every single time. You can use a shortcut using the periodic table. Any atom in group one will form a charged ion with a charge of plus one. Anything in group two will form an ion with a charge of plus two. And anything in group three will form an ion with a charge of plus three. Let's have a look at another example, chlorine in group seven. Chlorine has got an atomic number of 17. That means it has got 17 positive protons and 17 negative electrons. Again, it's an atom, so that means the number of protons equals the number of electrons. When chlorine forms an ion, it gains an additional electron. When it does this, it also gains an overall charge. The overall charge on this particle is now minus one, which is what you get when you add these two numbers. So now we call this a, an ion because it has an overall charge. Now again, if you want to work out the charges of particles, you don't have to do a sum like this. Again, we can use a rule of thumb. And that rule is that if it's in group seven, it will form an ion with a charge of minus one. If it's in group six, it will form an ion with a charge of minus two. And if it's in group five, it will form an ion with a charge of minus three. Something else to note about the elements of group seven when group seven elements form ions, they also change the name. So for example, a chlorine atom will turn into a chloride ion. And also if we look at bromine, a bromine atom will turn into a bromide ion. Group seven are the only elements which actually change the name slightly when they form ions. So to summarize, Metals, which are on this side of the periodic table, will always form a positive charge. Those in group one form plus one, group two plus two, group three plus three. The non metals on this side of the zigzag line will form negative ions. So anything in group seven will form an ion with a charge of minus one, anything in group six, minus two. Anything in group five, minus three. Some atoms have more than one possible ionic charge. So an example of this is iron. Now, iron can exist uh, with uh, quite a few different charges. If you ever see iron written like this, with the Roman numeral two after it, that means that the ion has got a charge 
of procès. However, if you were to see iron with the Roman numeral 3 after it in brackets, that would mean the charge would be plus 3. Now, any charges that are represented by these Roman numerals in brackets will always be positive. So, for example, you could also have copper 2, and possibly even copper 3. And they will always be positive. Groups of covalently bonded atoms can also lose or gain electrons to form ions. And these are called molecular ions or polyatomic ions. And there are quite a few. Some very common ones that you need to learn for A level are the ammonium ion, which is NH4, the nitrate ion, which is NO3. Minus, the sulfate ion, which is SO4, 2 minus, hydroxide ion, which is OH, minus, and also the phosphate ion, which is PO4, 3 minus. Let's have a look at one of these in a bit more detail. Let's pick on the sulfate ion, which is. SO4 2 minus. What this means is that the molecule contains one sulfur, four oxygens, so the overall ion has got a charge of 2 minus. Let's have a look at another one which is very common the carbonate ion, which is CO3 2 minus. This ion contains one carbon, three oxygens, and the whole molecule has an overall charge of two minus. Just remember the number at the bottom will relate to the number of atoms, and the number at the top relates to the number of charges that the ion has. Another common ion that you'll meet at A level is the dichromate ion which is CR2, O7, 2 minus. This ion has got two chromium atoms and seven oxygens, and the whole ion has got a charge of 2 minus. A list of molecular ions that you will need to learn for your exams can be found on page 53 of the OCR textbook.